Hey, this is Negan. I'm here with Claxton and Red Sox to talk about the 2024 ACBL playoff picture. Hey, I'm Claxton. I'm the owner of the Pelts. Um, we're hoping to go all this year, so let's hope for the best for us. <laughs> hey, guys. You guys might know me as Sox or Cal or Wolves of Ball Street. Um, ready to talk some playoffs, even though I'm on the outside looking in. I think it's going to be a hell of a year, and I'm really looking forward to this. All right, we're going to take a first look at the East right now. Oh uh, yeah, so let's talk with the for the Seven Sixers. They they've been having the best record in the entire league, <laughs> and they've been looking on top of one stream. You know they had double overtime yesterday against Suns, which was an incredible game to watch. I don't I don't know if many people saw it, but it was it was so much fun. <laughs> so yeah, let's give a props to them. As, as Claxton said, he pretty much nailed it. It's a one-horse race in the East. 76ers are running away with it. They've won five in a row. The only reason that streak isn't longer is because they rested against the Knicks. Uh, but I won't go too much into that. Um, after the Sixers, though, it's it's a nice three-horse race for second place there between yourself, Negan, uh, the Cavs, and the Bucks. That one's really anybody's game. You were way back. And now another fact that you're buying for second is is actually quite impressive. Yeah, I, I agree with the Sixers. They, they've they just played awesome since day one, and they've maintained it all year. Uh, they deserve where they're at right now. I think yeah, they're, definitely. they're, they're definitely team. they're definitely the favorite in the East right now. Yeah, I, th- I would say anything other than uh, getting to the finals for them would be a, a disappointment at this point. Yeah, so would I. I'd agree with that. And, um, yeah, just like you attested to, these next three, you know, they're – we're, they're all bunched up. I mean, two are tied. Another's a one game. The other two teams are one game behind the second place. Uh, Detroit was in second place just yesterday before today's loss. Yeah, I think for Detroit, it is injury prone right now. So, it's going to have to play playoffs. It's the only goal in mind. And there'll be, I think they can compete with anyone, including the Sixers. They have Bam, they have Bam who can compete with uh, Embiid and you know, they have defense to go all along with three position. So I think they can push out match against the Sixers, but we'll see how it ends up. Yeah, I think the Bucs are probably the odd ones out in that mix. Uh, as good as Giannis is, is, that team's just not deep enough. Um, even the Cavs have role players like uh, Freddie and, and <laughs> CJ that just drive that team to be a little bit deeper and stronger, and I think they'd go further. But, yeah, I would say if there's going to be anybody that challenges the Sixers for the East, it's going to be the Pistons. Not to talk about my my own team, but I, I, I agree. I think we're the the legit threat to the Sixers just, just in matchups alone um, mm-hmm. with Bam, Bridges, and Garland, and Cunningham, and Kuzma, and – you know, a, door, a lot of guys that can play both ways. And, you know, Bam's one of the few centers who can cause uh, MB to, you know, some problems. Uh, and I agree. I think Cleveland's going to hold on um, ahead of the Bucks. It's just a lot of Giannis, Giannis carrying the Bucks on his mm-hmm. back and, and not getting a whole ton of support from his, uh, his teammates. No, and... and- We'll see uh, how that trade with the Raptors works out for them in the playoffs. It, it was definitely an interesting move for both of them. For sure. Yeah, well, do the cap of the trade? It was uh, Westbrook for the endo, essentially. And then, you know, Cam Reddish was added in and a bunch of other players. But that's a such a trade. For sure. And then I, 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 what do you think about Indiana here? Because, I mean, they're, they're out of that one through four race, but they've still been looking pretty solid. Yeah, I think uh, the they definitely have a strong team. Sabonis is killing it this year in real life so that's going to translate well to them over here Uh, I also think the Nets they could be a a spicy playoff team too if Harden gets cooking he's got some interesting defensive pieces there with Brooks and Herbs uh, or sorry with with Herb and uh, Brooks yeah Um, (laughs) yeah exactly Herb Brooks that that one always just throws me off because of the miracle thing but yeah I think that's probably your six teams that can make them some noise. Raptors maybe in seventh on the outside looking in. Uh, other than that, I don't see much out of, of the rest of the mix there. Uh, Magic, they tried to sell at the deadline, but they're still hanging around. Um, the Hawks, they they had the owner abandoned, so that's kind of a weird situation. There. Yeah. That's and then we got – yeah, it really is. And, and then we got the Celtics who've lost nine in a row. That's, that's a whole other story in itself. 
Yeah. Yeah. So the question is, can the Wizards cost him? They want him to play him really badly. I mean, they've been savage has been on me saying, Hey, I want to win, I want to win. So yeah. can the Sixers can the Wizards cost him? And then if so, can, and then they're doing two playing games to make the playoffs. Can they do mm-hmm. that? Yeah, I, I like Wizards to pass the Celtics for sure. They'll be right in the mix there with Atlanta and Orlando by by the end of it, I would say. Um, that should make for some fun play-ins in the East. But I don't think outside the play-ins that any of those teams are getting very far, especially with the strength of the top of the East. I agree. You know, when I go back to the Pacers, um, you know, like I think the Pacers are going to be, you know, could be a threat to say the Bucks maybe if, if they end up four and five. Um, yeah, the uh, the Nets could could also give the Bucks some problems. Cleveland as well. Uh, I just think with when it comes to Brooklyn, if you can slow down, you know, Harden, you kind of you kind of got them. If you've mm-hmm. got that mm-hmm. that type of uh, of a team that can do that and still play well offensively, um, the Raptors, you know, I think it's great to see them getting the playoffs, but I don't. I really don't see them doing a whole lot. I mean, they could in the first round, anything can happen, but you know, right now they'd be playing the Cleveland Cavs. And I just, uh, I just see Cleveland coming out on that one. And then Orlando, uh, same, same kind of thing. You know, it's just, they got some young talent there for sure. It's a weak division. It's a weak conference. Let's be honest. I mean, really anything to me below the, the top, top three teams are, aren't really looking at a long playoff run no and and with the Celtics selling that that just weakened the conference even further because in real life they're the dominant team in the east so right as the 10th team here and and looking at maybe 11th by the time we're all said and done that definitely uh changes the landscape of the east here for sure yeah man the bucks have been disappointing Uh, i don't know what did wrong with with the build um they just don't click on stream (laughs) <laughs> and it shows, and you know, Giannis is just struggling out there because there's no spacing with you know with Jose and Westbrook, and you know, Damian Lee is playing a lot of minutes for them. It's just a lot of messy situation for them to be in. Yeah. So yeah, nice. they can definitely be a first on exit. I can see it. Let's talk about five to eleven. Um, in the <clears throat> East could be a tight race, especially six to eleven. Sorry. Um, with Brooklyn, you know, they have a tough schedule. Um, I would say Marky Calendars for the Monday. Um, Brooklyn versus Raptors as a game that will be on national TV. So that's a battle for sixth place out of the plane. And so we'll see how that ends up. There's some good matchups that will be coming down to decide this. You know, ultimately in the top three, there'll be some. Like Claxton said, Detroit's uh, – Detroit's got they're playing right now with a an injured Claxton and a, I mean an injured Garland and and an injured Kuzma and so they're having to kind of spread the minutes out trying to get some rest make sure everybody's good to go for the playoffs because they learned their lesson last year you can't just keep going 32 34 minutes a game all the way up until the last day and expect to still have juice at the end of the run. Mm-hmm. No, that makes sense for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, there's nothing much to talk about. The shorter Hornets, we can talk about them a little bit. You know how they were including the Petty Wars with uh, Utah and Utah. then came mm-hmm. alongside from it. They traded all their picks, all their assets to win now and did not do well. The the thing that sticks out to me for the bottom of the East that is just absolutely wild, 10 through 15, I'm pretty sure the Miami Heat are the only team that have their first round pick. Boston, Washington, no, and then uh, New York Knicks, no. Chicago, it's top three protected, and then Charlotte, no. So that that Bulls one will actually be very interesting to keep an eye on because it, it's top three protected. If it doesn't convey, um, the Bulls get to keep it. It goes two seconds to Orlando. Uh, if if it falls out of the top three, it's a it's a nice early first to Orlando there. So that's actually one to keep an eye on. Oh but, yeah, absolutely. That's a that's essential that one to see what happens in that, you know, and, and to go to the Miami heat real quick. I, I really, uh, I I'm disappointed in the heat this year. Um, Mm -hmm. I really did think they would be able to do more. They acquired Brunson. He's a, he's now a 92 rated point guard. We regret, you know, moving him instead of someone else now, but you know, (laughs) that's going to happen. You know, at the time we didn't know Cade Brunson, we went with youth. 
and Cade's upside. And I'm not complaining. I really did. I thought Miami was going to do more. New York to me is interesting because he's really, uh, you know, their front office has really taken a, a step back and, and reprioritized what they're doing. And they've got brought in a lot of good young players. They're going to be able to get to a point where they can start adding some, uh, you know, good veteran free agents. Yeah. Yeah. I think they'll be in a good, it was interesting with, uh, with Brunson there. You may, you might think you sold low on him, but I remember you and I had conversations when I was in Orlando for Wendell Carter Jr. for Brunson. So I think you ended up with with Bam being better than Wendell Carter Jr. So I think you. No, oh, absolutely. Him. I wouldn't. I wouldn't go back on the trade. You know, it's just yeah. kind of like hindsight. Like, man, he's doing so well right now. But I, I would. He's playing that like at almost an MVP level. He's like yeah. a top ten player in the league right now. Yeah, sure. absolutely. Yep. Going off in the Knicks, um, you know, I think they're the best ones out of the bottom five of the East. Where they have Singoon, who looks like an all star, mm -hmm. and they have a bunch of other young talents to come out of this. I agree. Alperin <laughs> looks great. Uh, Miami Heat with Bunsen, I don't think they have much else <clears throat> to uh, show their hats off. And I think Bunsen would be asking out this offseason if you no, know, things yeah, don't change quickly. Exactly. Yeah, I guess uh, Anthony Simons didn't kind of hit the way that we expected him to hit. Um, I mean, yeah, other than that, it's pretty barren. They have their own – oh, I guess they do have uh, their own first this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, we said they were the only team that did. But other than that, they only have 26 and 28 picks. Mm -hmm. It's it's barren. Yeah, they, they should – I believe they're going to have some more money to spend this year. I could be wrong. I'm not looking yeah, at it right They have now. tons of money to spend on cap space, especially if there's Bunton and Wichovic for whatever time to get back. Yeah, it looks like Hayward's expiring, which is a nice 31 million expiring there. Um, Duncan Robinson as well, Kendrick Nunn, Reg Bullock. Yeah, they'll free up a bunch of bunch of cash. Well. So he'll, they'll have a chance to rework it. It just depends on what the front office um, actually does. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I were them, and I don't want to put any smoke screens out there or anything, but I I might look at trading that first down and, and adding a couple extra picks just because they have no picks there so depends where it lands but if they can get a lottery pick maybe with there being no elite superstar in the draft this year maybe they they spread their their dart throws out a little bit more than just having one guy we're gonna review the west division now start us off claxton oh no if we went to portland trailblazers who are 52 and 16 um looking for another 61 season um somehow they did it you know they start off the year off and then they moved Jimmy Butler to point guard, and it worked for them. <laughs> and now they're on top of the West. So let's go start with that. What do you guys think of that move? Yeah, I mean they made a they made a couple moves there. They they traded Pascal. I think he was kind of killing their vibe a little bit. So they brought in Buddy Heald and and Barnes and a little bit more shooting. Um, they mm. also brought in Okongu, who they flipped for JB in that in that deal. So I think they balanced their team out a little bit better after they saw it wasn't working. Um, to to win three times in a row is always going to be a challenge. So I'd, I'd like to say that they can do it, but I mean it's going to be a war this year. Um, if you look at the West, the top two teams have won seven in a row and eight in a row. So they're just powerhouses right now. And and then if you continue to look down, it doesn't get any easier. So right. I have to, you know, give Portland some credit. This is they're they're going for back to back to back right now. And they they look like they they can do it. I have to give Steele some props. He's done a fantastic job with moving players around on that team, keeping it relevant and and mm -hmm. knowing who to hold on to and knowing who to let go. Yeah. Um, yeah. The Malik Monk there, pickup was a sneaky good pickup. It, it really was. I mean, he, the, the added shooting, I think, for us, like if I'm looking at as us, the Pistons playing them, um, mm -hmm. is, is going to be rough because you can't just defend the paint against them because they they will. They do not this. They can. They they will beat you with your outside game. Yeah, yeah. When you got Dame that can shoot from half court and make anything, it's, <laughs> it's not fair. No. Nope. And then we have a gentleman in the, out in the paint rebounding everything. So. <laughs> Yeah, they got excellent rebounding as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, Drummond's such a cheat code in this. I love he it. is. He is the. He is the anomaly in this game, as far as I'm concerned. He was never that yeah, good in know. Detroit. I don't think he's ever been this good anywhere. No, no. But in the ACBL, he is the dominating rebounder of the league. I mean, to be yeah. fair, Portland did pay 
the appropriate value. They paid him what four years, fifty six million. So they paid him um what is what <laughs> in ACBL. Yeah. So yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> it's just another move that they made that has worked out excellent. Yeah, another move, another two players we're gonna talk about. They got Jonas Jonas Valanciunas and uh, Malik Monk, who has uh, been great off the bench for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're both expiring contracts, so they're they're pushing their chips in the middle, which is what you got to do when you're trying for the three peat. Um, but I think those guys are exactly what they need to fill those roles. JV's having an uh, an underrated season for sure, and I think the Pals are gonna do pretty good in the playoffs this year. So, I think I really like JV. I, I hope he does well for Portland. Um, uh, next up, we have Dallas Mavericks, <laughs> who are 15-20 and looking sharp, looking yeah, – I think they won 6 now or something or something like that. And they have the pretty easy schedule going forward, and they look to, uh, look to go out to seed. I just think, um, you know, his off-season moves uh, have really, you know, more than paid off. I mean, the acquisitions he made with Capella and, you know, DeJounte Murray, it was just finally – Finally, um, after what three seasons, Luca gets surrounded with some decent, solid, good players. You know, not just not. Just, I mean, a lot of the time that first year, um, even part of last year, most of the guys they had uh, were were players that you would normally see as a seventh man, and they were starting them, sixth man types, uh, not really starters, so to speak, but just you know bringing in those few players. And that also fixed their depth a bit. Yeah, they've they've been they started out so hot, then they they fell back. I don't know what happened to them, but now they're they've won another eight in a row, and they they could threaten Portland. I don't know if they play each other at all the rest of the way. I'd have to look, mm-hmm. but if they don't, then it would be rough. If they do, they'd have a chance. I think. Then you move to the Pelicans, who you know they're loaded. They've been good all year. Uh, I, I think the difference between the Pelicans and the, the Mavs has been, even though the Mavs are one up on them right now, it's still the same, you know, games back. They're they're basically tied. I should have, I should have a better than this, but, you know, I've been resting my players. I think we're like, I've been resting all my eight guys when I rested them. So I think they're like one and six when I rested them. So all that could have been atrocious. <laughs> but we, we represent better than this, but. Yeah, this is what you guys is. have been consistent, though. You know, I mean, I think you, you've had a couple spots where you've dipped down. I mean, like Detroit, we we started out awful. You know, we we had a losing record after what was it? I mean, 15, 18 games. I can't remember. Yeah, games in, mm-hmm. and That's like nine, eleven, or something like that. <laughs> yeah, and you you started off good. You've had a couple dips, but you've always come right back out of it. You know, your consistency with those top three teams. Has mm-hmm. been remarkable. Yeah, let's go to the next two OKC. Um, no, um, if we could, I'd like to jump back to Dallas just for one second. Yeah, go ahead. Boy, to give my boy Trey a shout out. Uh, I think this is exactly what the Bucks should be looking at to how to surround a superstar with players. Um, you hit it on the head there, Negan. The way that they brought in the depth and and the the good role players to surround Luca there. That's exactly what the Bucks should be kind of trying to build towards and um compliment Giannis like that because that's that's how you get to first in the conference. I agree 100 percent and they'll have some money because I think every player but Giannis is a free agent next year yeah yeah exactly um I looked into the schedule it does not look like the um the Mavericks play the Blazers but the Mavericks have a very very easy schedule coming up it I know. looks like they, mm-hmm. they only play like- locked up yeah, it looks joke. like they only play like two teams that are top five in the conference, and then the rest of the way, it's yeah, it's and pretty... they can go on a run, a really yeah. good yeah, run. Yeah, well, they're already season. winning eight, eight in a row. row. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Also, staying on the Mavericks, um, they do have a lot of caps in this offseason. Um, I know Porter would be Porter is tired, so they would move that cap space, and then from there they have another star. They have another keeper to get another star. So. Let's see what they do with that. Yeah, they can keep it going for quite a while. Oklahoma City Thunder. Okay, see Thunder. The Thunder, they're always going to be a threat, in my opinion, whoever they're playing. They can win a seven-game series. It's going to be hard for them to win a seven-game series against those top three teams, but I wouldn't go as far as to say that they can't do it because they could. 
Yeah, if they find the right mix of uh, of their lineup, I think this team could cook. They they really, other than like they've had their defensive struggles, um, but I think they have the pieces to be a good defense um, with KP and Jared Allen down low in the paint and SGA and Paul George. All those guys can play defense. They got Durant. Um, I mean, they have scoring as well. They they could be a threat, and they're such a fun team. They're so deep. I just I love that team. It's fascinating to watch what Kiki's doing there. Yeah, I think he's done an excellent job as well. Yeah, going back to the first time matchup, um, the Suns, who have looked incredible since the trade for Kyrie Irving, the new owner, RNP, stepped up and made some solid moves around around the edges to bring the team to contender status. Yeah, so they pulled that-, that Kyrie Irving trade out at the 11th hour. Um, they got a great price on him, and he's been exactly what they needed to get this team cooking again. That team had too much talent to just sit idle where they were. Exactly, yeah. It, it was in the, like what 18 it, and 6 in the last since the trade deadline or something like that. They've been, yeah, yeah. I've felt the same way about the Suns. Um, you know, their former ownership kind of fell out, got a little got got busy in life, and you know, had to had to move the teams. But uh, he RP has done a really good job with them because as soon as he really took over, he started making changes. He didn't wait, he didn't, you know, there was no need to. You already saw what they had been doing for a while, so. Yeah, Phoenix has definitely gotten back up to where playing the basketball I think they would have been all year. Yeah, and when I first looked at that roster, I didn't think he had the pieces to make a big deadline acquisition, so to pull out Kyrie like that. At the yeah, that's top, huge. That was awesome. Yep. That was awesome. Yeah, do you think – what do you guys think of the first-time matchup against OKC? Is oh. that seven games for this? Is that going all seven? Um, I would say likely, and I think I would pick yeah. OKC. I would too. I think it'd be a seven game, definitely. Yeah, that that home court advantage might come in handy for a game seven there. For sure. I'll get, get it done. And it depends on, you know, going in how many minutes these guys are playing down the stretch, too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. definitely creates an interesting dichotomy of how much do you want to get that home court versus how much do you want to rest. Right. Because, you know, I remember Claxton, it wasn't too long ago, a couple of days ago, he mentioned that there's a lot of teams with a lot of fatigued players. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, <laughs> and if they don't get rested or limited minutes or just sit, you know, multiple games, it, it, you can't just pull them out of one game and expect that they're going to be back. I tried that last year; it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, let's see how how I need to buy some last, but I can't do it now anymore. With OKC catching up to me and Mavic ahead of me, so it's going to be a lot of trend. Let's see how how we do. Yeah, I almost feel that the Pels are locked into third at this point. Yeah, I yeah. think so. <laughs> yeah, I think you guys got it. And that's not the end of the world because that gives you a chance to check out a couple different looks and playbooks mm-hmm. and uh, and rest. That's what I've been doing, good. and we've been losing from that. So just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at least you know, it's better to lose now than lose in the playoffs. Exactly. That's exactly. I'm being, exactly. That's exactly. So I'm being positive. I'm like, right, it's okay to lose now <laughs> and yeah. experiment. <laughs> All right, let's go to Lakers next. And, you know, there was going to be a contender with LeBron and AD. So, and they, they showed it because they're, 40, they're 44 and 24. And they looked good on stream. They looked good on sim. What do you guys think? The Lakers are a team that I see just like the Suns were at the deadline. They didn't have a whole lot of uh, pieces to move, but somehow they pulled off Chris Paul at the last minute. And he's been great uh, for them just to bring their team together and, and thrust them towards a playoff run here. Um, it's kind of exactly what they needed. There's so much talent on that team. They can't just they can't just be mid. They got to either go all in or, or do something else. But so to get Chris Paul, he's like a perfect fit for them, just like uh, Kyrie was for the, for the Suns. Sure. I mean, I'd have to think when Chris Paul went there, too, he probably uh, reduced the turnover rate quite significantly, yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As well as hooking up Davis and LeBron with some easy buckets as well. Yeah, I just overall, I just don't think this team is deep enough to compete in in the West. If this team is in the East, I would give them every chance to win the East. But just with the way the West is, they have the stars to match, but they just don't have the depth that the other uh, top top teams in in the West have. Right, I, I I agree with that. But you know, the Lakers have been uh, when it come playoff. They've been uh, they. Play the guys are all 48 minutes, AD and LeBron. If that's the case, whew, first time match is going to be tough. <laughs> oh, yeah, they, they they have been a tough playoff team. As long as they get in, they, they've they made it tough on whoever they've played in. 
Last year, they swept OKC, and we still yeah. kind of uh, cheeky for that. That's <laughs> when you get uh, you get a playoff LeBron and playoff Davis AD kicks in. I could fall into that mix. Right. But if you got Chris Paul, you'll know you'll never get a ring. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving to the next team, the Denver Nuggets. They're tied with the Lakers. It's Nuggets are a bit of a letdown compared to their real life counterpart. Um, just to see how how dominant the real Nugs are, and <clears throat> I know that the owner here has made a couple moves, but I just don't think they've worked out as as good as he's wanted them to. Um, Bain looked like a superstar in the making. I think he's kind of cooled off a little bit. Cam Johnson, they gave him a lot of money too, so we'll see we'll see what happens there. But some questionable moves. Yeah, uh, they, the main they, problem is that they can't guard anybody, and that's yeah. the main issue on stream. Or right. in, in sim as well, they can't guard anybody. They have no defenders. And the only defender they have was Isaac Cotto, and they traded him to, which we'll talk about later, the Houston Rockets. Right. <laughs> I, I just don't ever mm-hmm. think Denver's found the right system for their offense either, you know, mm-hmm. to be consistent. Yeah, they have, they have great floor spacing. They just haven't utilized it to find that like, system, like you said. And hopefully they won't find it till next year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I think Dante DiVincenzo is a nice piece for them. He's he's had a great season, so um, we'll see what happens there. Mark Williams, uh, I know the injury there kind of set them back in the in the sim for sure. He he's yeah. been a beast. Yeah, he's back now, and so we'll see what they we'll can see do. How it looks? Because still in the playoffs, they get it rolling. They can do some damage for sure. Hopefully, yeah. Not. I mean, I mean, other than this year, it looks like they have picks in 2025, 2026, 2027. So, I mean, they, they do have some pieces that they can move around to improve this team, um, going into next year, but I don't think they're going to be strong enough this year. This is add some defense to all, like, they need to add a KCP who's I know has been great for them, and you know, yeah, things like that. Um, go yeah. in, <laughs> they don't, they lost the defenses that makes them who they are so. for sure. All right, let's move on to Memphis. Memphis Grizzlies. The, the, from here down, I don't think these teams have the greatest shot at doing a whole lot. Um, Memphis, their defense has got to be among one of the worst in the league. Yeah. Again, okay. they're about we're, they're about here last year. I want to say, didn't they? Didn't they make? They made the playoffs, I believe. Mm-hmm. Um, they but did. again, you know, it's just like they've got offense, you know, but. It's like nobody runs. It's like almost nobody runs back on defense sometimes, with the way they allow they allow so many points. Yep. And yeah, then, and I mean when when you got Zubak and and Rui down low when you're going up against Portland, who's got JV on the bench, that's just telling you the class difference right there. Yeah. I know it'll be it's interesting so to see what happens with Jaw. Um, I I can't think of a more polarizing player in the league right now. He could be in absolute superstar if he wanted to be but he needs to get his head on straight and, and, and stay healthy but yeah uh, to me he's just been a disappointment yes yeah. i mean how many chances do you think they're gonna give him right you know before they're mm-hmm. just you know before everybody just decides to just you know be done with it and just you know whether he plays or not he's just gonna lose all of his you know advertising if he hasn't already i'm sure he's lost most of it you know because they were putting him up as as one of the new poster boys of the nba but they can't do that yes. anymore with him because not only is he screwed up once he's screwed up a couple times mm-hmm. and there's no telling it doesn't look like he's learned like like you said it doesn't look like he's learned his lesson no exactly and how does it affect donald mitchell the future he would be an expiring next next off season so he could really well request our this off season, based on how the playoffs go, so we'll keep an eye on for that. Right. Yeah, and I think if if the Cavs have a good run in real life, that might boost his rating and value for sure, which I think is it's possible. We'll see what happens mm-hmm. there. I just think they they made a big a big mistake in my opinion when they signed Porter to that massive contract. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that anyone with a back injury, I can tell you from personal experience, that's a fuck. Yeah, and at that much money, I mean you're 33 million, 30, 36 million, 38 million. Yeah, tough to get off it. There should have at least been a, a team option in, in one of those last. Years. I would say it's close to immovable unless there's just an offer that somebody can't resist. You know, we'll give you multiple first and Michael Porter to take us off our hands, but. You know, I, I don't see that happening. No. Yeah, I think the, if the Bulls haven't spent all their first round picks at all, they'd be the ones. But 
other than that, I can't see it. Right, let's move on to a nine and ten seed, the Houston Rockets and the Golden State Warriors. Um, the Rockets have been incredible since the Jeff Bogdan trade deadline. I think they're now over five hundred, over five hundred, and all at least tied. I think so. You know, they were eight games below it, and now they're a game above it. So huge props to them. They figured it out, and you know. We'll see what they do in the playoffs. <laughs> I look at them and I see a team that's just built for the future. You know, they've got they've got a lot of young talent. You know, whether all of it's going to pan out, who knows? I kind of feel like they're my rival here, and and we're battling for the last play-in spot, but we're also kind of looking at the same window of the future. Um, we got Ant and Ivy and Barry Smith Jr. And then they have guys like Wemby and Suggs. And um, we both have a plethora of, of draft picks coming into this year. We each have three first round draft picks, um, multiple in 2026 as well. So I think, I think me and Houston are going to be battling it out for quite some time, unfortunately. Well, you've got young talent too, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That's why I think yeah, we're kind of in the exact strong. same window. <laughs> you got quite a bit, you know, uh, Ivy, uh, is a guy that I just think he's still figuring things out, you know, because he still yeah. he still does the occasional I'm gonna go end to end, I'm not giving the ball up, and he just kicks it out off of someone's leg or his own knee. Yeah, um, he he's just too, too turnover that. prone right now, but you can see all the scoring talent in the world he's got. Yeah, he's one of the quickest players in the league. I think Monty, uh, I had higher hopes for him going in. I think starting him would have been a better option than, than having him ride the bench and then trying to start him later in the season. Now he's trying to work out all those wrinkles of being a starter. Um, <clears throat> but I, I love Ivy and I think, uh, I think I'm going to keep him and see how he develops. And even if, even if he doesn't develop well, I'll go down with the ship, but yeah, he's, I uh, mean, I just, I look at him and I see he's going to be a future, you know, what, what he's going to average, you know, is, you know, could be a lot, could be just in the twenties, but he's he's starting to play, you know, really hard both ways. He's really improved on defense. He's still got a ways to go. But uh, I, I really like him as a player, too. Jabari yeah. Smith, I really love. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's a good time. And, and yeah, the super sure. and, 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 and that's kind of what made uh, Master an expendable with Ivy. I found, I found they're the same player in a lot of ways with their elite scoring, but they don't offer much in the playmaking passing department yet. It could be there, but and then their defense is both atrocious. So I didn't want two of those guys on the roster. So I figured um, I'd, I'd stick with Ivy, even though Master was Canadian. It was a tough, tough decision for me, but... Um, <clears throat> But Ivy yeah. has uh, Ivy has the length and the, the the athleticism to keep improving defensively. Yeah, for sure. And and then just to circle back to the Rockets, um, Suggs is a guy that I was enamored with coming out. Um, I liked him higher than Scotty. I liked him higher than Green in, in his draft here. Uh, he was just a dog, and and I love those dog guys. So I did try to try to get him off Houston. Um, we were talking maybe a Mathurin and Suggs swap before I moved Mathurin, but. It didn't didn't end up happening. A sharp still a good piece there too. You know? Absolutely, because he oh, yeah. just some of the things he does. You know, it's just you can't teach that stuff. I mean, he just needs to get more more consistent. I mean, what is he still? Just twenty years old. Yeah, twenty years old. So, also I mean, Canadian. Yeah, also Canadian. They uh <laughs> they need to just give him time. You know, but I, I think he's going to be another great player for them yeah i agree they're they're dangerous they definitely will be all right let's talk about the playing matchups we have houston was warriors potentially i know what the moves are trying to make up the four games out so looks off out there for the, the wolves right now but what do you guys think about the Rockets warriors matchup in the first nine ten season my first thought is it's, it should be a good matchup i just i think you're going to run into playoff steph and beal and you know, unless Houston can figure out a way to, to to just slow that down, they could win it. But if they don't, if they just try to go, you know, toe to toe, they they're probably going to get beat. I I know it doesn't mm-hmm. translate over to the the same as much, but it'll be Wemby's first playoff experience, so to speak. So I think just going up against Steph and and they actually have Rudy as well, which will which would offset Wemby's length and and <clears throat> the inside presence a little bit. So I would give the edge to the Warriors in that matchup. Yeah, me too. And then do you think they can beat the Grizzlies to make the playoffs? I do. Yeah. Uh, just again, <laughs> I don't think the Grizzlies have enough down low, and and with Rudy, 
down low, that's that should be enough to win that series with when you have Steph offsetting Jaw. Yeah, and, me too. I'm, yeah, and and, mm-hmm. and Beal offsetting um Don. Should we talk about the East playing games? I don't, I don't think we talked about those. Or yeah, I don't Hawks, think Boston think will be in there. Boston will be out. I think Wizards yeah. will be in. Yeah. yeah, right, right. There we go. So Hawks, Wizards. What do you guys think about that matchup? Trey Young is back. Pascal Siakam is back. Josh Giddy is still high overall. Despite yeah, I think I think the Washington Wizards are going to have to drain the tank just to make that play in. And, and I don't think by the time they get there, they'll have enough steam left to beat that Hawks team. Yeah, I think mm-hmm. the Hawks are just uh, you know obviously they've been mismanaged with no ownership, uh, but they've they've got some good players. They've got you know more talent in depth wise than you know they're going to have. So and they did the finish the eight seed, and and they've got the star players too. So it's uh Raptors was Magic for seven eight, and uh, Hawks was Wizards for nine ten. So okay. who do you that see? seven eight matchup will be interesting. Uh, don't know if the Raptors have an answer for Chet down low if he gets cooking. Trey. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But they also don't have an answer for Ingo, who's been cut No. Off. No, you're right. <laughs> um, one of the big pieces Orlando's always needed is that small forward defensive presence. Uh, we were hoping that Jonathan Isaac bounced back healthy enough to resume that role, but <clears throat> he's been inconsistent as well. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect that. You know, I thought he'd at least come back in and be, you know, dominant defensively and yeah, you know, be the guy that's doing all that dirty work that he, that you know, like Nassar Thompson does. But um, yeah, I haven't seen that from him either. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those injuries were killer to his career. Absolutely, like one after another. I, yeah, I would go with uh, Atlanta there. Hawks would take the Magic for the eighth spot, and then it would be Raptors was Hawks, and then Magic was his Wizards for the nine ten. Yeah, that'd be fun. I could see that too. Um, yeah, that would shake things up. I think I think the Raptors will actually match up better against the Hawks than they do the Magic, and they would probably win mm-hmm. that. And that's been incredible in real life. So we'll see if that translates to 2K. Because Zion has been struggling on Sim. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't understand it. I didn't understand the last year either. But that's why I traded for him. So I traded away him. So we'll see. But it didn't hurt you none. <laughs> yeah. That, that says a lot, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm, I think I'm better off, but you know, it was a weird fit with KD and Cat and Zion. So who are your who are your East picks to go to the the finals? Oh, it'll be Sixers versus. I hope the Pistons will up. Man. I don't want to see the. I don't want to see Sixers Pistons in the first second round. I want to see that in the Western Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> Agreed. Yeah, yeah, me too. That's where I'd like to play them at too. We'll just have to see what happens with these injuries and how we can sort mm-hmm. things out. Yeah, so yeah, I think I think Cavs are the only team that could upset that from being the the Eastern Conference Finals, other than the standings lining up to ruin it for us. So a bit on defense, they have Fred Van Leet, um, Jerome Brown, Mobley, Porto. They have a good defense. So yeah, they're sure. they're actually ahead of Detroit in defense just by what uh one full point per game. Mm-hmm. You know, so they're one of the better defenses as well. Yeah. So uh, I don't I think they make two seconds on the, we have been that. able to beat them every time we've played them this year. That's important. Absolutely. Yep, but it don't mean nothing to come to playoffs. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Playoffs is new total different series. <laughs> exactly. What do you got your what are your picks for the West? Well, I think the Pelicans, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> you got to you gotta pick yourself. Yeah, we have some things that we didn't try out yet, and we're going to do it on stream, and we'll see how how that looks, and hopefully it works out. Yeah, by now, all everybody, right? every, all these playoff teams, we should all know, we should have all been trying different, you know, schemes, different defense, you know, settings, different offensive settings to figure out what best works with who different lineups um you know we recently moved Cade to the to the sixth man and it's I mean we went on like a seven eight game run where we were blowing people out Mm -hmm. not necessarily because of that I'm not saying but it's just you have a whole season to figure out what works what doesn't what systems work what doesn't and if you don't find those things you're already in trouble entering the playoffs because you don't want to start practicing 
you know, different things going in. You want to know what you're going to do headed in. Right. Absolutely. My picks for the West, I'm going to take uh, the Pelicans versus the Thunder in the finals. That would be a fun like one to watch. I, I'd have to go, you know, I got to give, I got to get Portland in there. I mean, they've won the last two. Uh, mm-hmm. they've, they've proven their staying power. And then I would run with, it's it to me, it's a tough choice between Dallas and New Orleans. I would love to see a series there, but I think I'm going to go the Pels. I just think they have more, more scoring, um, better defense, not by a lot. It should be a close series if they play each other. Yeah, we played. I think we played once. We went to overtime on stream. So yeah, Dallas got a really good. Uh, they got a great road record. <laughs> so do you. Yeah, it'll be a fun series. The rest will be so much fun. I can't wait. <laughs> all the TikTok, all the strategies that we will implement. It was going to be incredible. Yeah, it should be a good run. Real quick, I want to thank Claxton for stepping up this year. Uh, while I've had so many things, a lot of people don't know, I've had a lot of things that uh, have pulled me away from the ACU universe um, this year. And I just want to thank you very much for everything you've stepped up and done. I really do appreciate it. I mean, it's, it's a community effort. So I would have done the job that we asked from the PRC to the TRC and all the trade committees. So yep, everybody's done everybody awesome. Good. Mm-hmm. Best trade committee in the business. I'll tell you I, that much. I believe so. Basically, that's the community that we trust. And so, you know, if I can't stream, someone else can pick it up or, you know, things like that. So we'll continue building on this and we'll go to another step. I've, I've served on all four committees, all four trade committees. So I have a, a, a sense of knowledge behind the scenes. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for being here, guys. Um, yeah, thank thanks, thanks for doing this. I appreciate One day both we should you being here on the field trades of ACBL. <laughs> hey, what, what better what better way to spend the last hour uh, leading into March Madness? All right, guys, appreciate you. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye bye. Bye guys.